Hi, uh, a very good afternoon to you today. Um, well, a um, few weeks ago, uh, I was on the phone with the, one of the organizer guys here, and we were discussing the, the, the topic of my talk and, and, and what's the focus. And, and <clears throat> the guy said, well, we've got those four sections, and we plan to putting you into the section named Creativity Beats Capital. And which I was said live wasn't particularly good, and I was very excitedly answering and saying, "Yeah, that would be great because that's what all, all I do for a living is make sure that the creativity meets the capital in the best possible ways." And the guy went, "No, no, no, you, you misheard me. It's about creativity beats capital." Oh, I, I, that was odd for me because from my pure entrepreneurial perspective. Uh, they, I would never imagine any, any reason why they should, should fight each other. And uh, actually, they, they both are needed for, for doing things right in entre entrepreneurship and business. So uh, I, and later that day, I went home and I looked in the news, and um, there was the news that the socialists had won the election in France. I got even more suspicious. I thought, OK. I've, uh, I've done some investments, and then back in my dog days, I used to run even a VC fund. I probably, that the beating thing was meant literally. And uh, I, I'm assigned the, the capital part here. But anyway, um, uh, ignoring the threats and, and or ignoring the risks of, of uh, getting beaten up in public, I'd like to share a few of my thoughts about importance of failing as a cornerstone of entrepreneurial culture, especially for our new digital technology or, or digital uh, economy era we're in. Uh, for the past 10 years, I've been involved in startups and mostly technology startups. Uh, and uh, I tend to call myself a serial entrepreneur, which is probably a, a polite version for the uh, expression of having failed sufficiently many times to make a series out of it. So probably, probably I could be a, a, a expert from the field directly for this. So does entrepreneurship matter socially? So even if, even if you are voting for socialists, you may think that it still has great things in it. It's first the, f the entrepreneurship. The entrepreneurs are the ones who are responsible for, for diversity and, and dynamics in eco economies. Uh, they also cater for self-realization of people, not only themselves, but also those who then join the team and become the, uh, the employees later on. So it's certainly, it certainly has benefits. But if you look from the history, kind of take, take a step back, look from the, from the, on, onto the history of, of what we tend to call progress. That's, uh, it looks like it's a never-ending uh, sequence of success all around and where the failure things fit in. But if you just observe it a bit more closer, then you, you can clearly see that this is, those, those two are, are really in interlinked much more than we would expect in initially. So um, a few examples on that. Uh, think of Walt Disney. Walt Disney obviously is the, the broad name of the uh, 20th century's animation. And the Walt Disney funded his, founded his first uh, illustrating company. That was an illustrating company. Uh, back in Kansas, and which immediately get bankrupt. And he founded this because he was fired, he was kicked out of the news, local newspaper from artist's position for the reason of having no imagination. And then he later on, he went and, 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 f and founded his first uh, animating, uh, animator company, and this also very, very quickly uh, went bust. And, uh, the great thing is that Walt Disney walked away from all that, that fate, what they call, call refer as a failure, with really very important assets, which was the team 
He later collaborated for the entire career, which were the ideas on the cartoon characters which later made him famous. Another example, Thomas Edison, a very controversial person, but it's, uh, he's from, by, by many regarded as the, the greatest and most successful inventor of the second half of 19th century. Among other things, he invented the practicably producible light bulb, actually the one we are using pretty much still. And by, by inventing that, he invented the light bulb after several thousands of failed experimentation attempts. And later when he was asked, what, what, what is it to fail several thousand times, he was, as his very famous answer, it was that I didn't fail, I, I just invented several thousand ways how this really doesn't work. Uh, this shows you a uh, winning attitude, which enables you to learn and carry on. And the, Third example probably is, is Henry Ford, the automotive tycoon of 20th century, the founder of what we know is the, the Ford Motors Company. And he, he uh, went bust, he, he bankrupted at the age of 38. And believe me, getting bust at 38 is a hell lot different than getting bust at 28 because I've done both. Um, and uh, still, but he, he, he managed to do the, it right the next time. And interestingly enough, he had support and backing by, by some of the same investors who lost the money in the first place with him. So, which means that he still, through failing, he grew, he maintained and grew the, the trust of others in what he did. So you, by now you can probably notice that my, my examples have one little bias. They all are American. And why? And well, don't we Europeans have, have similar examples of successful fails? Yes, we do. But for a reason, we don't promote them. And I'll come back to that in a, in a minute from now. So... Um, why failing is important. We as, they, th that's about learning thing, right? Uh, you, you, you can grasp it by now. Because we are, as human beings, we are not that good at learning, but we certainly learn much more and better from failures than from the success. So failure is actually a, a very, a richest source of, of the learning in, in few ways. And most, Typically, the ways are it puts your plan to the test, because before that, it's just a bunch of theoretical assumptions. Later, it's tried out practice. Um, it puts your, yourself to the test, because people tend to, to uh, be poorly judge their strengths and weaknesses before they try them out. It took me to blow a few companies before I realized that I'm really bad at sales. Uh, so I, I just make sure that now someone is around to do the job early on. And it also, like, like the Disney example, it also provides you with the lots of opportunities and, 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 and provides you with lots of assets of importance later on, be it a team or a capital. By the way, the smart capital providers, they're always would see the, the baggage of, of genuine fail being more assuring than a false success. So that's what, what's coined as a failing forward concept, meaning that the, each failure brings you closer to the success if you are able to learn on, on, on it. But it, it requires two prerequisites, from which one is the ability of the person to take out the me to depersonalize the, the failure because it's, it's very difficult to learn from painful experience. Uh, but the second and even more important thing is the social acceptance to the failure. Because the benefit of learning from the failure is, is a very limited if society does not give you the second or the third or the 55th chance. It's, 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 really, it's really limited, so it's, it, it has a social dimension in it. 
A few words, I'm, I'm running out of time, I've noticed. I haven't been too optimistic with that stuff. A few words on us. We have, we have issues with the culture in the north of Europe, or put it northeast of Europe. We, we have this Germanic traits of culture that everything should be in, 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 in certain order, and there is no, and, 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 and failure is no option. So basically, uh, there are hilarious examples which still are enforced by law in a few countries which are banning out here from the business if you have failed the first business for a number of years. But we have, we have great example which I would, would like to share with you as a learning example nearby and, and very similar culture which is Finland. So what Finland did, and for, for us for in tech industry it's very easy. We always have the, the benchmark the, ecosystem, which is Silicon Valley, from which the TED comes from. And this, uh, everyone wants to beat it, or at least m match it, right? And the Finns, like two dec decades ago, they figured out they, they, they're an industrialized country, but they want to do something different, and they want to go on with the, with the digital thing. And, and they started really to, to do great things. They started to invest into, into R&D and, 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 and gave all sorts of subsidies to the companies and everything. And, and it was great. And like for 15 years, they, they realized the, the Finland is doing great at those you know, innovation scorecards and all beauty contests Europe is obsessed with, uh, with right? We, we all have some, 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 some thing to, to be proud of in that, but it didn't really work because the business didn't have impact. It didn't grow, it was there, yeah, there were lots of startups, but they didn't grow sufficiently fast, they didn't internationalize properly, which is very important for tech industries. So they changed the tactics, like about seven years ago, they started not just because the typical European answer would be, put more money into innovation system, wrong. They started to promote the entrepreneurship as a culture. It was lots of great things they did, just to mention, they are, the last year they launched, they calendarized officially the fail day of the nation, which is somewhere in October, where everyone is invited to share their fail story with a lesson. And you know, sharing thing is also quite difficult for, for this part of the, of the world, right? And the networking thing, with you now as, as, as if, if there is no, no, no beer served, that networking is difficult in North of Europe. But, Maybe by coincidence, but in last few years' time, Finland has, has done remarkably better than, than, than before with all that money. Of course, money is still there. So, so what's the lesson? If we want to beat Silicon Valley, if we want to beat Finland, or meet to match Finland that come close to that, I think the lesson very simply is just more money is not an answer. Of course, we're underfunded in many ways, but just more money is not an answer. The, the, the culture is... There are few very practical things we can do. It's not a punchline in, in a presentation. There are very few practical things. One, to ensure the safe passage back for those people who are taking their sabbaticals from their normal works and uh, no, normal jobs, which is mostly for R&D and creative industries. They, should, they, they know that they can come back to that, that place after they have tried out and worked for a while on a startup. Another thing, um, is uh, the, still the money, the capital thing, put it the right way, meaning that we're, we can, as opposed as we have done here, that we've done extend, big, huge uh, bureaucratic grants long into the lifetimes of the companies, and which make them critically dependent on the grants, and, and the business is over in that the very moment, making a very small, but no strings attached, so-called pre-seed money for those guys who really are taking break off their careers to focus for two or three months maximally on a, on a project or, a, or an idea and then see where, where it takes them from there. And the last thing, of course, is to have our own fail day. Uh, I think we deserve it. So I'll, I'll end with this one. Uh, Education, ed educational visionary, Sir Con Ken Robinson, which is also uh, Robinson, sorry, which is also well known for, for his TED talks, has once said that if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'd never come up with anything original. I'd like a little bit to elaborate and bring it further, saying that if we are prepared to accept failing as a valuable outcome of the process of doing, we have unlimited opportunities 
to succeed in everything we do. Thank you very much.